Substitute decision making is a generic term that is applied to various types of legal authority that confer the power on one person to make binding financial, health care, or other decisions for another person. These include guardianship, financial powers of attorney, health care advance directives, mental health care advance directives, health care representatives, representative payees, and trusts. Substitute decision making is sometimes called surrogate decision making, and the people who have the authority to make decisions for other individuals are generally called surrogates. You are watching one in a series of videos on substitute decision making by the Disability Rights Network of Pennsylvania and the Developmental Disabilities Council. The people who appear in these videos are individuals with disabilities, family members, and advocates who are interested in and impacted by these issues. This video addresses common questions relating to financial powers of attorney. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Mark Murphy, and I'm an attorney with the Disability Rights Network of Pennsylvania. And we're here to talk about financial powers of attorney, which is uh, one type of substitute decision making. So I'm going to be happy to answer your questions. So why don't we get started? And who wants to ask the first question? Mark, what is the power of attorney? Well, that's a great place to start. So let's talk about that. A power of attorney is a written document in which one person, who's called the principal, gives the authority to another person, called the agent, to make the principal's financial decisions when the principal is unable to do so. Including financial decisions? Yes, including financial decisions, and powers of attorney can be broader than that, and they can cover different subjects. Some of them might cover health care issues or something else, but for the most part, when people are talking about financial powers of attorney, they're, they're really interested in financial issues. So what kinds of decisions are covered under a power of attorney? It's really all different types of financial decisions. There's no real limit on it. Uh, very commonly, people will use powers of attorney to handle uh, buying and selling of property, banking decisions, uh, buying insurance, investment type of decisions. So there's really uh, no limitation on it. It's really just whatever types of financial decisions come up in your life. Why do I need a power of attorney if I can make financial decisions myself? Well, that's a great question, because a lot of people think, as you say, if I'm able to do it, why do I need a power of attorney? And the answer really is, is that no one really knows what the future holds. And you may be able to make your financial decisions today, but you might not be able to make them tomorrow. And so what a financial power of attorney allows you to do is to prepare for the eventuality uh, that you may be unable to make uh, financial decisions for yourself. And so it's really a, a good way to do that type of, of preparation in the event that something were to happen to prevent you from making financial decisions. What are the downsides of not having a financial power of attorney? Well, that's another important thing that people need to, to know about as, as they make this decision uh, and what's best for them. The, the, the downside to not having a power of attorney is you give up the opportunity to plan and to make your wishes clear so that when you uh, do find yourself in a situation that you're unable to make uh, financial decisions, uh, you've uh, prepared for that and you've taken care of that and that might be something that's important to you and obviously to your family. The practical da major downside is, is that a financial power of attorney is really a pretty straightforward and simple document that allows you to articulate what it is your wishes are uh, for your financial decisions. And if you don't have that, you may force your family or, or, or others into making more difficult decisions and in more difficult circumstances, including whether or not they might have to get guardianship over you because you're unable to make financial decisions. So it can, to not have a financial power of attorney uh, that means your financial decisions can maybe get tied up while people don't know what to do because you're not able to do them. It may force your family uh, to go into court in a guardianship proceeding, which is more expensive, involves lawyers, et cetera. So uh, it's really to your advantage to do a financial power of attorney because it really is a pretty simple way of articulating what you want to happen financially and who you want to make those decisions. Can a person with a cognitive or intellectual disability create a financial power of attorney? I'm glad you asked that question because that's uh, maybe the most common question that we get uh, on powers of attorney. And the answer is it really depends on the individual involved. 
uh, of some people with intellectual or cognitive disabilities have uh, the ability to understand and make an informed decision about what they're giving up, which is, of course, the right to make their own financial decisions to the agent. So if the person who has the intellectual or cognitive disability does understand that, then they are able to make a, a valid power of attorney. If, however, the disability is so significant that they're unable to fully understand what it is they're giving away, the right to make their own financial decisions, then the power of attorney is not going to be valid. So it's going to depend on the individual abilities and inabilities of the person involved. Now, do I need a lawyer to create a financial power of attorney? Not necessarily. Uh, you can do, a, if it's a fairly uh, simple transaction or your financial life is fairly straightforward, uh, you probably can use the types of forms that you can get on the internet. Uh, 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 what happens is, though, and what's important, is that you make sure you're using forms that are specifically tailored to Pennsylvania law because each state sometimes does things a little bit differently. So it's important that if you do use the types of forms that are available, that you're using forms that are specific to Pennsylvania. Now, having said that, if your financial life is a little more complicated or you have a, a more complicated set of transactions that are involved, it might be a good idea to get a lawyer involved. So it's going to really depend on your personal situation, but it's not required that you get a lawyer involved. So you're going to have to make that judgment depending on the complexity of the situation. If I make a power of attorney, do I have to give one person the power to make financial decisions for me? Well, that's a really good question because a lot of people sometimes aren't sure who should make that decision for them. They might have a spouse, they might have uh, uh, you know, two or three children or something like that. So the answer is you can have one person to make the decision or you can have two or even more, presumably, though that makes it a little more complicated. So, but if you name two people as the agent to make a decision, you can do that. But what's really important is that you make clear uh, what their powers are. For example, if you had two children who you wanted to name, do the children have to agree jointly? Uh, can each individual child that you have um, make that decision? And it doesn't matter whether the other person agrees or disagrees. So you really just need to make sure that you've set forth in the power of attorney, if you have more than one agent, what the rules are regarding what decisions they can make and what that decision-making process will be. Do I have to give authority to make all financial decisions in a power of attorney? Well, that's also a really good question because a lot of people, I think, come to us and say, if I do this, am I giving up all the power to make decisions when I might want to do something on a more limited basis? And uh, the good news is that you can choose what financial transactions you want to have your agent make for you in the events you're unable to do that. So you can, if you want, do a general power of attorney in which all the financial decisions are made by your agent. But you can also decide that that's not what you want to do, and you want the agent to only have limited powers over certain areas. For example, you may want somebody to handle the real estate transactions or your investment types of decisions. So the answer to your question is no, you don't have to give all the power for all financial decisions to the agent. You can decide, and that's one of the beauties of a financial power of attorney, you can decide which financial decisions get made and by which person. If I make a financial power of attorney today, does that mean I give up control of my finances? It doesn't mean you give up immediate control of your finances. Uh, you get to decide the scope of the power of attorney. And remember, the main reason you're going to want to have a financial power of attorney is for financial planning moving forward in the event that something were to happen to you, some future event were to happen that you would be unable to have control of your finances. And so you can set it up in such a way that it only takes effect when you become incapacitated, that is, unable to make your financial decisions. You could also set it up so that the financial power of attorney is triggered by a certain other type of event or is somehow uh, tied to certain dates uh, that, that might be in effect given what you have to do, such as travel or, or other types of inability to be available to make decisions. But it doesn't mean that when you sign the power of attorney today that you are now giving up power to control your finances moving forward, you can decide uh, what the triggering event is so that the agent has the ability to handle your finances. How long does a financial power of attorney last? Again, that's going to depend on how you choose to draft the power of attorney. 
uh, you have most powers of attorney are going to be considered durable powers of attorney. And that means they can go on indefinitely until you revoke it. And if you don't revoke it, it will continue to, go, to, to be effective. Then you have what are known as non-durable powers of attorney. And those are powers of attorney in which you've chosen to put certain limitations on it. For example, date limitations in which you might, for example, decide to go overseas for a month and you want somebody to make your financial decisions while you're away. Maybe you won't be easily reached. So you would create a non-durable power of attorney and put those types of date limitations on the document. But most people in most situations are going to want durable powers of attorney. Because remember, the whole point of this is to have a document in place so that somebody can make financial decisions for you in case the unexpected happens and you, something occurs where you're unable to make your own financial decisions. How can I revoke a power of attorney after it goes into effect? Well, the good news is it's very simple to revoke a power of attorney. And all you need to do is contact your agent and say, I revoke my power of attorney. Now, you can do it orally, and that would be uh, legally effective, but it's really a good idea to put it in writing. So I you know, would suggest that you write a letter to the person that you've designated as the agent to make your financial decisions and say, as of this date, I hereby revoke uh, your um, the, the power of attorney, and you're no longer my agent for financial decisions. So it's really very simple to revoke a power of attorney. Well, thank you all for your questions. They were all great, and I hope I was able to answer uh, some of the concerns that you might have about financial powers of attorney, and thank you very much for coming out. If you have additional questions or need more information about financial powers of attorney or other types of substitute decision making, please visit our website at www drnpa.org to access DRN's guide, Consent, Capacity, and Substitute Decision Making, as well as other videos in this series.